So I have a strong belief that uh, that, that red teaming um, is all a bit silly. Uh, it's a whole bunch of no true Scotsmaning. Everybody uh, parading around trying to pretend that they're better than everyone else. Half the time, we're not even that useful to you as a client. You're paying far more money than you would get if you just did a pen test, and you probably get the same results. Um, and at the end of it, criminals can still steal millions of rands from us and from the country uh, while we're talking about domain administrative access. So I think the big thing that red teamers in particular have been missing uh, is the action on objectives part. So when you talk about the Lockheed Martin kill chain, which we all talk about, we'll spend 10 million rand implementing EDR to deal with the first two, and we'll maybe ask the business payments team if they detect fraud on a regular basis through an internal audit process. Uh, so I feel, particularly from a, a red teaming point of view, we, we've done that wrong. And I hope that's been controversial enough to get you to at least listen before coffee. Uh, so we're SensePost. Um, we've been around for, for 20 years. Last year, we were bought by Orange Cyber Defense. We're still trying to f figure out what that means. Uh, we are an offensive security company, so we focus on threat emulation, application security, DevOps type, uh, DevSecOps, and, and hacking training. Of course, today we're going to be talking about threat emulation. Uh, we were founded in an office, well, in a bedroom in Centurion 20 years ago this year, so the 14th of February this year was our 20th anniversary. Uh, we opened up our UK office in 2011, became Crest members in 2012, uh, and then sort of took a break and came back, realizing the error of our ways. Uh, so we are our Crest accredited members, uh, and we also have an office in Cape Town. We try and differentiate ourselves by having a senior team. Uh, I did some maths recently, which was hard for me. So 20% of our team uh, is made up of people with an average of 11 years direct hacking experience. Uh, that's significantly skewed by Rogan Dawes, who has 22 years of direct hacking experience. Um, which is quite phenomenal. We think lots of people who started with Rogan gave up a long time ago and uh, retired into management like me, uh, but Rogan's still going. We think we've got a, an innovation track record. Uh, our GitHub has just under 100 public tools that we've released over the 20 years, free to use by, by anyone, which we've helped to demonstrate vulnerabilities or just share knowledge about the research we conduct internally, and also so you can test that we sort of know what we're doing. Uh, and we like to think that we're customer focused, that we can bring in a sort of obsessive view at helping you achieve the results that you're looking for rather than a standardized template based on the glossy that we put in front of you. Okay, but on to what I really wanted to say, which is the, the bit from the beginning. So everyone says attackers are getting more sophisticated. Uh, this is what I think that specifically means. I'm actually stealing this from a guy named Chris Budnick, who was my first boss at Deloitte. Some of you might know him. Uh, over, over 15 years ago. And what he said is there's two types of sophistication. There's technical sophistication, that's the one on the top there, and there's process sophistication, which is one on the bottom. So people who engage in white collar crime, who can uh, add ghost employees, who can make uh, and authorize payments through supplier payment systems without hacking anything, just because they know the process inclusion, those are the white, common, white collar criminals on the bottom right hand corner. Uh, People like us who like to think that we're quite good with things like malware and AMSI bypasses, we're in the top left-hand corner, and we keep getting better at writing new and different kinds of code. But the real increase in sophistication, I think, is the, the two of those groups working together. And that doesn't need to be a team of 20 people, although sometimes it might be. It can be a team of two people. The second you have collusion between people who can provide white-collar criminals with cyber bypasses, you end up with a very different problem. And so what we've seen, for example, when we test organizations who spent 10 million rand putting EDR in place on perimeters, it's a little bit like putting airbags and all the Mercedes on the road because the payment systems still run on mainframe as much as banking executives have been trying to get rid of those. Uh, and we know that Swift and RTGS have been baked into our financial system for, for decades. The MQ uh, queues controlling all of these things will exist there without passwords. No one's ever looked at them. Uh, but in the meantime, we can triage a piece of malware that was put by a, uh, a macro-enabled malware on someone's desktop in, in seconds. So I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's great that we've focused there, but I think we've sort of failed to focus on the other side. And so that's why I say I think action on objectives testing is missing. So if we look at the Lockheed Martin kill chain, this is, I think, if it, it's, this is a drinking game. If any of you play the drinking game, this is the point at which you drink because it's the second time I've mentioned it. There's this big focus on steps one to, to six. How do we get malware on systems? How does it communicate through the network? 
Uh, what does that look like? How quickly can we detect it? And playbooks are built around these things. But I really think the action on objectives is where we're missing things. What does your business do? What are the critical things that could end your business? Or particularly for this audience that could end our country. What would a large enough amount of money that could significantly damage the economy of South Africa look like? And what would a test across the ecosystem? We've got all the players here. We've got the banks, we've got the Reserve Bank, we've got Sabric. Let's organize some kind of test I'm not saying with us, you can use any of the providers in here, but for the sake of the country, let's, what is a, a test of somebody going after the business systems that allow us to make an authorized massive cross-border payments look like? And how could cyber enable that? How could cyber enable criminals to achieve that? Because when you have those conversations, business people then have a lot of answers that we weren't aware of. Uh, they'll often talk about things like reconciliations. Well, what if we go and update those reconciliations, then what? Well. Sometimes there isn't an answer. Uh, and I think that's really what's missing in a lot of this, um, this conversation. And as much as uh, I, think, I think threat intel is a fantastic improvement and certainly the way we do our work, uh, but I think we're just missing a whole bunch of that in South Africa, particularly when it comes down to the, the real business of preventing cyber-enabled fraud. Um, and that's my, my pitch to you. Thank you for your time um, and thank you for the opportunity.